Welcome to our review on ions and ionic compounds. So the first thing we're going to do is recap on that phrase ion that we've already encountered in our earlier chemistry units. So an ion, if you remember, is a charged particle. So ions will form when we either gain or lose electrons from an atom. And what we've already seen is that metal atoms will lose electrons and therefore become positive ions. So for example, sodium will become Na plus because it loses one electron and non-metal atoms will gain electrons to become negative ions. So chlorine becomes Cl- because it gains one electron. Now, don't forget that the number of charges that we find on any particular ion is determined by the number of electrons that are either gained or lost. So that if we've got one electron being lost, it's a plus one. If we've got one electron being gained, it's a minus one. If we gain two electrons, it's a two minus and so on. And there's a handy little trick that can help you to remember what the charge on each ion is. If you think about the group numbers on the periodic table, group one will always be plus one. Group two will always be plus two. Group three will always be plus three. Group six will always be minus two. Group seven will always be minus one. And if they were to ask you about the group fives, then they would be a minus three, but they're less likely to come up. So make sure that you can identify what charge you get on any particular ion, because these are going to be really important in helping you to make sure you've got your answers to ionic bonding correct. So one of the things you need to be able to do then is to draw what's called dot and cross diagrams. Now we're going to start off just looking very simply at how we would draw the actual diagram for an ion. So we've got lithium and chlorine as two examples here. If we look at lithium first on the left hand side, lithium has an atomic number of three, so it's got three electrons. So two go in the first shell closest to the nucleus and one in the next shell. Now when it becomes an ion, it's going to lose one electron and therefore when we draw the actual ion, we don't draw that outer shell anymore because we've lost the electron from it. So we've only got the one shell with two electrons in it. And then you've got to put that into these square brackets and don't forget the charge in the top right. Because we've lost one electron, then that means it's a plus one. So you just put the little positive sign there. If we now look at chlorine on the right hand side, then chlorine has got our electrons all arranged as you can see. So two in the innermost shell, then eight, and then seven in its outer shell. So what we actually find is that this one is going to gain one electron. So we've got seven in the outer shell at the moment, to get the full outer shell, it would need eight. So it gains one electron. And then we end up with a single negatively charged ion. And you can see that what we've done there, because we've gained an electron from somewhere else, it's represented by a dot, whereas all the others are crosses. And this is really important to remember this. So when we've got a positive ion and a negative ion, then when those are reacting together, they form what's called an ionic bond. Now you could be asked to draw a dot and cross diagram to show ionic bonding of two chemicals. So in this case, I've given you the example of lithium and chlorine. So on the left hand side there, we can see the actual atoms of lithium with its three electrons and chlorine with its 17. So what we actually find there is one is as dots, the other is as crosses. And that is vital to remember that one of your actual atoms must be drawn with the electrons as dots. The other one must be drawn with the electrons as crosses. Otherwise, the next bit gets very confusing and you're going to lose marks just because of using the wrong notation. Then what we see is that that little electron in the outer shell of lithium, that's going to be transferred from the lithium to the outer shell of chlorine. So it's not just lost, as we obviously showed in our earlier diagram, it actually goes somewhere. It's being transferred from the lithium to the chlorine. And then what we need to do is show the ions on the other side. So lithium we draw just as we did previously. So the innermost shell only with its two electrons as dots, and we've put it in square brackets with the plus sign. Then we can draw our chlorine, which has again got its 17 crosses, Plus, we add that one dot to the outer shell because that's the electron that came from lithium. So it's got to be the same as the other lithium electrons. 
put it in square brackets, and this time because we've gained an electron, it's got a single negative charge, hence the little minus in the top right. Once you've done that, you can work out the formula for your actual ionic compound. Because we've got one plus and one minus, then one lithium ion will join to one chloride ion. So our formula would just be LiCl. Make sure that you do practice this so that you get into the habit of making sure that number one, you have one with dots and the other with crosses, that you always remember the square brackets and the charges outside. If you don't include those bits, you're likely to throw away some marks on these questions. So that's our dot and cross diagram for ionic bonding. So if we think about a typical ionic compound that everyone has encountered, sodium chloride, which is good old table salt, then what we actually have are sodium ions, which are positively charged, and chloride ions, which are negatively charged. So on the right there, I've given you the space filling model of sodium chloride. So you can see that every positive ion there has got negative ions surrounding it and vice versa. So this is an arrangement called a giant ionic lattice. So all of those positive and negative ions are being held in that very clear fixed positioning where they've got that regular repeating pattern of positive, negative, positive, negative. Those are being held in place by ionic bonds. So remember the ionic bonds form between the positive and the negative ions. Now, if we think about what ionic bonds are, they're very strong electrostatic forces of attraction, and they will only occur between oppositely charged ions. So hopefully at the end of this video, you now know what ions are and how they're formed. And you can also draw dot and cross diagrams, not only to show a single ion forming, but how two ions will interact to form an ionic bond, making sure you remember to use both dots and crosses and that you can also describe what a giant ionic lattice is and what ionic bonds actually are.